All right, welcome to the Keep a Looking YouTube channel. Today, let's talk about the SKS and then upgrade one. The SKS has been described as the cockroach of rifles. They never really were the best rifle, but they kept turning up in conflicts around the world since they were conceived. To this day, the SKS is still used around the world by border and ceremonial forces. U.S. forces face thousands of SKSs in Vietnam and still run across them in Iraq and Afghanistan today. SKSs were produced in several countries to include Russia, East Germany, Poland, Albania, North Korea, and China, and I'm sure some others. My favorite SKSs are the Yugoslavian-made ones because of their minor differences from the rest. The Yugo has a slightly thicker stock for your forward hand and a non-metal butt plate to help deal with the recoil. All Yugos have the folding blade bayonet and not the spike bayonet common on the Chinese and other models. SKSs fire the same round as the AK-47, which is the 7.62 by 39. But that's about all they have in common with the AK, even though they generally operate in a similar fashion. The AKs also came with a 30 round detachable magazine, while the SKS had a 10 round internal magazine. The SKS was designed first, but it never really caught on because the AK was right around the corner. AKs were more compact, could fire on automatic, and admittedly, they're generally more versatile of a platform. Back in the 80s, you could buy surplus Chinese SKSs for as low as $89. You could pick up Yugoslavian model SKSs like this one for $139. SKSs have bayonets permanently affixed and connected to mechanisms that allow you to swing the bayonet into its extended or retracted positions. This was a very creative idea when they were designed. The top of the SKS is extremely simple. This one had a scope base welded onto its original dust cover. So I bought the cheapest one I could find off of eBay until I can find an actual surplus Yugo cover. This cover is from a rifle produced in 1955 at the Tula Arsenal in Russia. One thing that sets a Yugoslavian SKS far apart from the rest is the grenade launcher. I know, it sounds crazy when I say it too. The Yugoslavian SKSs have a muzzle device that allows them to fire rifle grenades. The shooter would slip a grenade onto the end of the muzzle, Flip a valve that forces all the gas down the barrel, insert a blank round, and since blanks have no projectiles, all the gas throws the grenade downrange. The grenade launcher also comes with a blade sight that you can flip up to gauge your distance. What's kind of cool is you can buy replica grenades made with rubber to launch just for fun. Now one of the upgrades I am going to do is to convert to a 20 round detachable magazine. It's a simple decision really. I'll be able to double magazine capacity and reload in a fraction of the time. To load the original 10 round box magazine, you'd follow a process. You'd lock the bolt open. You'd find the groove next to the charging handle on the bolt. You'd load in a stripper clip and push the rounds into the magazine. Obviously, this takes a while to load and reload, especially when you're under fire. But that's the way it was done. This is merely older technology. Detachable magazines, on the other hand, are far more practical and easier to use and allow the shooter to put more rounds downrange in less time. Because the SKS wasn't made for detachable magazines, the bolt must be open to insert or remove magazines. However, there is a modification that can be applied. The SKS has a rib at the bottom of its bolt that secures the box magazine in place. So we'll have to grind away that rib because it does not allow for detachable magazines to be loaded and unloaded. You must avoid taking off too much material. So take your time, go slowly, 
and grind off a little at a time. Clean up your grinds with a Dremel. Do both sides until the bolt rib is nearly flush to the bolt face adjacent to it. Once the magazine can be inserted and removed, you are done. Now since you have a detachable magazine, the next upgrade should be to find a more efficient way to release the magazine from the gun. The original magazine release is hard to manipulate because it was made to be unobtrusive and small. We are going to upgrade to the SRR or SKS Super Rapid Release. The SRR is made by a company in Texas called Texas Firearms. And they can be had for about 60 bucks. The SRR allows you to change magazines with one hand. Without this device, it's a three handed process. You gotta hold the gun, use one finger to locate and manipulate the tiny magazine release, and pull the magazine out of the gun. When installed, the release allows you to remove magazines in the same fashion as you would on an AK. Just sweep your thumb forward and the magazine is released. On the SKS, the new release sticks out a bit further from the original, but it becomes extremely easy to insert and remove the detachable magazines. The most important question with all these upgrades is how the SKS shoots. Well, it shoots great, and it's still an SKS. It is fun, and since it's not a Chinese model, it's pretty accurate. In this case, we just added some technology to it to make it more practical and more modern of a firearm. Now, while I wouldn't do this to a more rare version such as a Russian, Albanian, or East German SKS, but this 1974 SKS is not particularly rare or valuable. My goal was not to merely copy an AK. In that case, I'd just buy an AK. I merely wanted to upgrade an SKS into what is, without a doubt, a better tool to take plinking or hog hunting. What do you think about these upgrades? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for visiting the Keep a Lookin' YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time.